Last time Comet Nishimura appeared, Galileo was in his 30s, and Shakespeare had just finished Romeo and Juliet. Comet is back now, seen for the first time last month, and it will be seen for the last time, maybe by you, within days. Comet Nishimura is back. But it's not bigger than ever. We're going to go to the physics lab where I've got some stuff queued up for you so we can see the comet. We're in Hayward at Chabot College. And the home of the fighting gladiators. Scott Hildreth has been physics and astronomy professor here for 35 years. So come on in. This is the physics lab. And we're here to learn about a comet that appeared suddenly out of the blue. So this is Comet Nishimura. It was discovered about a month ago, early August, by a Japanese astronomer. Hideo is an amateur astronomer. It's somebody who loves what they do and not necessarily needs to be paid to do it. Images of the comet have been spreading worldwide. They're beautiful, fantastic, and not what we'll see. It's very hard to spot. You're not going to see something as beautiful as this that a telescope with a very, very advanced camera captures. And best you and I with our eye in the early morning is going to see a tiny little dot. This is what you're more likely to see if you manage to find it in the pre-dawn sky in the next few days. Here's how. You want to look to see this comet in the east, northeastern sky right before sunrise. So go out at 5 o'clock in the morning if the weather's clear. It's in the constellation we call Leo the Lion, and you can spot it right over the horizon no more than two or three or four fingers right above the horizon, but only for maybe half an hour. So on a scale of one to 10, 10 being fantastic. Right, and this is a two or a three, I'm sorry to say. It's so far away from us. 78 million miles is a long, long way away. And as it's speeding towards the sun at 240,000 miles an hour, we don't have very much time to enjoy it. In fact, you'd better catch it early Monday or Tuesday morning because then it'll be gone. So grab the chance if you're inclined. That's right, you grab the chance. It's not gonna be easy. It's still worthwhile trying. It's always worthwhile trying. But I can't emphasize enough that the only way you would have a prayer of seeing the comet is to be away from city lights. And even then it's not easy, but if you've got dark skies, good eyes, and a pair of binoculars, it's like going fishing. It's a thrill if you catch it, and here's hoping. Uh, our, Ryan, uh, our director, mm. said, is this the green comet, which the last comet that came around had a greenish tinge to it. This one also actually does have a greenish tinge to it because uh. it's got carbon, so it's exuding carbon, and carbon is what you and I are made of. So we've got this interstellar visitor that is kind of made of the same stuff that we are. Cool. Yeah, that neat. But it's not easy to see. I want to emphasize that. There's stuff on the Internet saying the comet of the century and all this stuff. And it's, it always it's happens. Not, yeah. People and always what, say, oh, you're going to love it. And then yeah. it's like, oh, I didn't see a thing. Yeah, I don't want to disappoint people, but it is kind of neat. You can get to elevation. Yeah. That'll, that'll help yeah, a, well, a lot, I'm yeah. sure.